this is now working out quite well for us because all the usable foods you can do is drain more FOBs. The artillery is going to run out of supplies, these, and even if they can wipe out the Fukuzu by calling in more infantry, all the FOBs will have been part, it's partially drained. There's now an intense battle for Mike going on the social from Mount Mutt, Chaparral's and Tokyo. The tank destroyers are biting in. I've tried to bring what artillery I have, but at the moment I only have two artillery guns brought up. I've been reinforcing my own units of golf. It's imperative that we hold on to these high point zones now that they are pushing up the map. At the moment, they're getting 11 points. We are getting. 18, so we still have a fair economical advantage, however, thanks to the initial attacks that we launched in the Delta, which really had to push them back, I mean, they couldn't take any ground. As you can see, the artillery is now being distracted. They're now trying to eliminate the mods used them. They know these guys don't have an FOB that's full to resupply them. They know where they are. The range isn't that long. These artillery will be able to knock them out fairly quickly. And the gazelles of recon calibre has been brought in to identify them to make the artillery super accurate. However, the Vapuji are still up and running. Unfortunately, they move away, allowing the Jaeger to recapture this FOB. But this artillery is quite badly defended, although it does have the F1 auto cannon. Which means that this artillery is definitely not something the Vapuzi should be taking on unless they can get a good ambush spot on it. The gazelle's now been brought into range because it knows we've got a lot of units here. That artillery could do a lot. This art the artillery could do a lot of damage over there if it gets the chance. However, because it's moved away, the Vapuzi now have only have one rail target left. Jaeger. However, they've strayed way too close to the outside of the woods. I mean, the Flak Panthers can open up, but once the Jaeger are down, the Vapuzus are once again concealed. Also, this supply truck has been captured, allowing in, in them to be able to bring some for, reinforcements with them. Which means that this next squadron of Shoshir Shramans most likely will have another hard time to do it. As you can see, they're now running short of artillery, they only have a few shots left. But they do not waste those shots. The Vu the Vapuji Special Forces finally go down, meaning that the ABs will be able to capture the FOBs and Hemis without problem. As you can see, I brought my beacon helicopters in. It spotted the tank stars that were still here that threatened the recon vehicle, and my helicopters dealt with it quickly and without any concern. Over here, their chaparral was knocked out um, by a heavy artillery brand. I noticed the high veterancy it had and knew that this was definitely a golden unit to take. My ally launched a counteroffensive and now with these defensive, with their AA defenses now, my MI-24As are still can, are free to wreak havoc on these remaining forces. Death allowing us to secure my Kanako without too much of a heavy. However, it didn't really go to plan as because of the senior incident earlier in Alpha, I was unwilling to advance my helicopters in without full confirmation that Chaparral was down. As you can see, we're reprioritizing to once again take the Alpha. However, Chaparral is still up, almost full veterancy, gazelles, anti tank equipped infantry approaching, lots of helmets to keep it supplied. This is definitely going to be close. All the FOBs have now been reinforced, and they're now bringing in two Abrams with a with a powerful cannon and lots of machine guns. I think that um, one of the command vehicles in Charlie might have been knocked out by artillery I don't I don't see it so I think the Vapuji must have spotted it enough for us to land an artillery volley on it if, as you can see however it is very good they're buying a new command vehicle to retake Charlie because they need these uh, this supply zone to push Delta 
Otherwise, they're in as bad a position as we are in terms of reinforcement times. At this point, we have managed to reclaim some advantage, taking a 400 point lead. And we still ha firmly have the economic lead. Now they're having to spend their command vehicle points to retake the Charlie. And the fact that this force here has been thoroughly weakened. We are definitely in a strong position. And we decide to press this by taking Delta again, pushing them back into their base to firmly give us the advantage for the rest of the game. The T-64, um, the T-62 MVs are what I've brought in. They're very advanced T-62, meaning they're quite heavily armored. They've got the Schenkska ATGM and a powerful gun, but they have low armor. The ATGM land would have done a lot of damage, but, but unfortunately for them, they didn't unload in time, and the first volley of our ATGMs knocked out their vehicle. The second one is still here, but it's in a bad way. It's panicked. It won't be hitting anything. Two M11PA rams of night are trying to move through the town. The monsters could have taken them easily, however, they had a bad angle on them, meaning they weren't open for very long. These A rams could cause some trouble for the battle for Delta. More gazelles are being flown in to keep the recon up. The Sultan is now on its way to Charlie. But, but now, my artillery and our rocket batteries. These, these are now opening up. We have four BM-21 Grands and now seven Pions. This is a very powerful artillery force, which is heading home. Death crushing all units in the woods. The gazelles forced to retreat because of my Tunguskas and the T-72s and the T-62s are now firmly moving up. However, they brought in some gazelle hot helicopters from earlier. These do, do quick damage. However, now it's soon to go down. The Tunguska stop, aim their missiles, and although they aren't that as accurate as the Chaparrales that we've been facing, the sheer number of them mean that the gazelles quickly go down. However, they knocked out several of our meat shield T-72s, meaning that when the Abram get into range, these T-62s these were, are going to be uh, quite exposed, as well as the Tunguskas, which are still up in the front. They go down in a 1-2 attack, but their chaparrales are down. Our, our MI-24s can advance, knocking out the units, and allowing us to secure a minor victory. Very close battle. In this game, I managed to secure so a small overall points lead of 2,262 points to 1,852. That is all for this game. Hope to see you tomorrow. Goodbye.